Okay, today I'll be cleaning and rebuilding a carburetor on a Polaris Trail Boss 250. And this is going to be the same as a lot of the two stroke 250 models, the Trail Blazers, uh, and then all years and models of the Trail Bosses. So this is for the 250 two stroke. Uh, we've got the oil injector um, that would be hooked up to this gear here. And we've got this cable still attached. Uh, what I did is just pull this carburetor off of the four wheeler itself including the throttle, the thumb throttle here. And I just wanted to show you how to remove that uh, off of the carburetor. So first thing we're gonna do is remove this cap so we can get this out of the way to clean this carburetor. You can go ahead and just spin this cap here. Um, if you wanna leave the throttle attached to the four wheeler as well as the throttle cable, what you would do is remove this cap um, and pull the slide and needle out of there. It's fine thread aluminum, so just be careful going back together. You screw it on there straight, and we'll set the carburetor aside for now, and I'm gonna show you how to remove the slide and needle out of this um, assembly here. So what I do is I'll take my, my left hand, and I'll take and just kind of pull this spring completely out of that slide there, and then you've got a keeper in there, and that, then I'll take and just kind of shake that, and that keeper will come out, and so will your needle, so be careful that you pay attention uh, to the parts that will come out there. So we've got your keeper there. Now what you're able to do, I'd slide my finger back a little ways and then take and push that cable down. And there's a groove on your slide there that that um, cable will slide into. So you can just push that cable down slightly. And like I said, there's a groove right there. It'll fit in the groove of that slide there and you'll pull it out there, the larger of that, those two holes there. So now what we can do is set this aside. I try not to tip it upside down because what'll happen is that, uh, that needle will slide out of there in that plastic spacer. So now we can take the spring out of there. Now we can take and unscrew the cap. This is a 10 millimeter on the top here. It's just, uh, as there's a lock nut here that'll that'll tighten onto this cap. Now we're able to take the cap off of there and get that assembly out of the way. So we've got a rubber O-ring up top here that seals it up. So make sure that that's there. Make sure it's in good condition. A lot of times those will dry rot. So just pay attention to that. Now we'll take and get this throttle cable out of there. And we'll go through and clean the carburetor now. So now we've got the carburetor and we've got the top cap here, we've got the spring, the keeper, and the slide. I'm going to show you that this quick here while we have it handy. Take and push that needle out. This needle is adjustable. Do pay attention where this plastic spacer is. It sits underneath of that clip there. This clip is typically right in the middle. Depending on what you have performance-wise done to your four-wheeler, you may need to adjust this uh, clip slightly. Check uh, if you buy a HMF exhaust or uh, pro circuit, whatever it is, um, they'll tell you specs for where this needle needs, where the clip needs to be on the needle. Second thing you can do is replace the needle and sometimes um, a jet kit will come with a new needle. Uh, you want to check the size, it's written real small letters right there um, underneath of the clip. Sometimes they have different um, diameter, different lengths. So check that out. And we'll set the top cap assembly aside while we clean the carburetor. So we have idle adjust on this side here. What that does is your slide is gonna be in there. You adjust your idle, that's gonna push that slide up. Now it's gonna push it up uh, just very, very small increments. And you wanna make sure your four-wheeler is completely warmed up before you go ahead and adjust those. So you wanna do like quarter turn at a time, if that, again, when your four-wheeler is warmed up. And we've removed the choke already. It's a, typically a, a brass or a plastic cap on there with a plunger in here that'll slide up and down. Um, I, I've shown that in other videos on the Polaris's. Uh, so if you need to see that, check those other videos out. I don't have the cap handy to do that at this point, but that just slides out of there. We're gonna flip this up now. We're gonna pull this bowl. Now you can pull this bottom cap here. That'll drain the fluid out of there or the fuel out of there. Um, and at the end of the year, if you wanna do that, that's fine. I suggest if you're just letting it sit for the winter, run stable, uh, in your fuel, allow it to uh, run through your carburetor there, and the fuel that's in your actual bowl here will have that uh, conditioned fuel in there, and you won't have any issues the next spring. The problem is if you drain this, and there's sometimes some water residue that'll kind of sit in here or get in here just from humidity, um, 
it will it'll rust or not rust but it'll gum up your bottom bowl here so you can pull this bottom bowl here i could do that i i had it finger tight um just to show you what it looked like underneath here you're gonna see your main jet so if you're trying to rejet your four-wheeler again for performance reasons uh you can just pull that um pull that cap replace your jet uh, from that position so you're not having to pull your bowl off every time to do a good carb clean I suggest you go ahead and pull that bowl off that way you can clean through all the jets make sure you blow through all the ports uh, just pulling that bottom cap getting that fuel out of there um, isn't more than likely going to clean a carburetor if it's gummed up also a lot of the debris will sit inside this cap here you want to make sure you clean that out really well Second thing on this cap, you want to make sure this O-ring gets replaced or at least make sure it's in good condition going back together. We have our four Phillips screws out here and we'll go ahead and pull those. Make sure that you don't over tighten those going back together. It strips them out a lot of times, uh, makes it, making it a challenge for the next person that pulls the bowl. We've got your overflow tab here. This bottom nipple here should have a vent line going to it and uh, you will want that to drain um, underneath of your four-wheeler so you want to make sure that the vent line runs underneath the four-wheeler otherwise if your four-wheelers uh, bouncing around the back of a trailer or back of a pickup uh, that fuel that's coming out of that overflow will dump directly onto your cases and uh, cause discoloration just just unnecessary fuel dumping on your motor there so what that looks like underneath here here's your overflow here and so again fuel sloshing around there it's gonna it's gonna overflow in into this overflow tube here this port here and drain out the bottom you do want this free and clear so make sure you blow through that with compressed air otherwise you will um otherwise that fuel sloshing around in your bowl here will go directly into your fuel tank and that's or excuse me directly into your cylinder which is not a good thing so there is your floats here two of them on this model inspect those make sure they're in good condition they are plastic um, i have seen them crack before you want to make sure that that's not the case on these they are directional so you can just go ahead and pull these plastic caps off of there they pull these up just remember the order that they go in and uh, it does say up it is a little tricky because when you've got the carburetor um, sitting like this up is a different thing so you do want to make sure that you have them on the right direction when your bowl is facing up like this as it would be in the run position you want the up to be facing up so that's the bottom bowl there. Next, I'm gonna pull that main jet, and it takes a six millimeter wrench or a socket to do that. And this is the main jet here. What the main jet does is works from about a quarter throttle all the way up to full throttle. So if this is, if you're having a hard time with it or a, a rough time with it, uh, getting up to speed, possibly um, about half throttle, it spits and sputters. A lot of times that's gonna be your main jet along with your needle these kind of run together like this not not quite as extreme but um, this needle allows fuel to flow up through your venturi here so your needle is going to run down here right into your main jet and the main jet is going to allow is going to regulate how much fuel is going up into the cylinder this is going to regulate how much or when that fuel comes up into the cylinder so if that makes sense there if this if you have a larger jet if you're full throttle your larger main jet is going to allow more fuel to to go up into your cylinder if you've got a smaller jet smaller main jet it's gonna it's gonna restrict the amount of fuel going up into your uh, cylinder so if you have a longer needle it's going to take longer for that fuel or longer for that slide to open that slide is going to have to open more to allow that fuel to come up through your carburetor and go into your cylinder so if you have questions on that make sure you leave those in the comments below um, kind of explain that pretty quick and without actual fuel running through there uh, it's really hard to uh, picture that if you've never seen something like that before you do have a brass washer underneath of your main jet so make sure that goes back in that order and inspect those both those pieces really well one other thing about this main jet you do want to blow through it with compressed air carbon choke cleaner is also a good thing uh, just to make sure there's no debris main jet isn't gummed up anywhere 
make sure it's in good condition there. Next will be your pilot jet. That sits down in this area here. You've got to use a smaller flat screwdriver to get to that. Uh, one key thing is you don't want to use too small of a screwdriver. And I'll show you that as soon as I get this pilot jet pulled out here. Once you get it at a certain point, you just kind of dump it out just like that. If you use too small of a flat screwdriver in there, what typically happens is where that, where that port runs through there, your screwdriver turns in there and you'll just gouge up uh, the top of this um, top of this jet here and it'll cause uh, fuel restriction. So be careful you don't damage that. I like to use the largest screwdriver that I can fit down in this uh, port here and will also fit on here. And a lot of times you can tell that just by turning it. If, if you're just getting ready to pull that jet, you put your flat screwdriver in there and um, you know, you're just sitting there spinning. Obviously, the flat of your screwdriver isn't fitting into that groove there. So just pay attention to that. Same thing though, you wanna make sure you clean that pilot jet out really well. Pilot jet is um, anywhere from start, so no throttle, all the way up to quarter throttle. So if that, if your four-wheeler has a hard time starting, more than likely it's your pilot jet. It's a very, very small orifice and uh, they get gummed up very, very easily or any kind of potential sand or debris that's in your fuel tank that gets sucked down into your carburetor. Well, when you start your four-wheeler, we'll try to get sucked up through that pilot jet and get lodged in there. So that pilot jet, if you can see here, uh, runs into this port here and it comes up um, and out these two ports here. Really hard to see, I'm sure, on this video, but there's a jet or there's a port that's kind of facing towards the cylinder and then there's also one that is um, straight up and so those work together to dump the right amount of fuel into your carburetor to start your um, four-wheeler. Um, typically what it, what it is, is is your float sits on here. They work together like this. These floats, a little bit different style than most, um, just rest onto this here and to make sure these are adjustable. So if your uh, fuel is constantly leaking when it's sitting there in the shop, um, or you just feel like your bike isn't getting enough fuel or too much fuel, you can adjust these. Now, I, what I don't want you to do is have a bad needle and seat, which is this right here and this underneath here. If that's if you have a bad needle and seat and you're trying to fix that by adjusting your float height, you're never going to fix it. And what you're going to do is cause either a lean, uh, lean bike, meaning your bike's not getting enough fuel, or you're going to have too much fuel and that fuel is going to be dumping out your overflow there. So I don't suggest adjusting this uh, unless it's out of spec. Don't adjust this to try to fix your fuel leak problem um, if it's, you know, unless unless it's just an easy small adjustment that you can make to do that. To clean this area out, and I would suggest doing this when you're cleaning the carburetor, pull the pin here. Sometimes these get stuck. You've got to use a pick. Be very careful you don't break these posts off here. They are aluminum posts, break very, very easily. And as soon as you pull that pin, typically those are fairly easy, you'll see your needle and then this is your seat here. Inspect the rubber tip on your needle. This one here you can see has got a little bit of a notch in there. What happens a lot of times is these become squared because as you can see your needle is somewhat squared um, just from use. Now you can replace the needle in the seat. I would suggest doing both of them at the same time. I wouldn't suggest replacing your, your seat here without the needle. Um, I don't know that they're sold separate ever, um, but I would suggest just replacing them together. To replace your seat, 10 millimeter uh, wrench there, and be really careful when you're loosening this up not to slam into one of these posts here and break these off. Just be careful of that. So once you get it loose, again, it's a brass fitting, so it doesn't have to be uh, extremely tight, but pull that off of there and you'll see um, you've got a gasket underneath there, kind of a red uh, soft gasket there. Um, but not, not an O-ring, it's, it's an actual gasket. Um, uh, you've got a port going up through there and the fuel coming from your fuel tank is gonna run down this uh, port here, down into your needle seat area here. So you can take compressed air, blow through that, make sure that that's free and clear. Going back together then, just make sure that you've got both pieces on there. And before you start re, uh, 
rebuilding this car right before you start going back together with it, I would suggest blowing through all these ports with compressed air. Just make sure all of them are free of any debris. Um, <clears throat> make sure that there's no buildup in any of those. So going back together then, we can take and put our seat back on there. Again, making sure you don't slam into one of these posts here. And then we'll grab our needle. And it doesn't matter which direction this needle goes on on this tab here. They're both exactly the same. Slide that down into place. Grab your pin here. I like to put this pin in the same direction that you pulled it off. Um, it'll, I think it'll go in the other way. I don't think it'll cause any problems, but sometimes you've got a tapered area on one of these or even a tapered pin. Sometimes if you put them in the wrong direction, you just cause issues down the road. So just make sure. I always put the pin closest to me, slide it in this way. It's the same thing every single time I clean the carburetor. Main jet, again, make sure that spacer's on there. Make sure it's in good condition. Then snug that up. Again, it's brass, doesn't need to go Hulk mode on it. So just make sure you're snug there. Take your pilot jet then. Hopefully it's free and clear at this point. Take your small, large screwdriver, tighten it up there. Again, just snug it up. This gasket, this one's in really good shape. A lot of times these dry rot, a lot of times these split. Make sure you're going the right direction here. Your uh, open area is gonna slide over that tube there. Slide it down. Make sure it's seated properly all the way. Make sure this is all cleaned out. Carbon choke cleaner, uh, compressed air, whatever you gotta do to get that clean. Slide that down on top of there. And make sure it's seated properly. Sometimes, sometimes with that gasket on there, if it's a new gasket or a thick gasket, you'll have a little, little crooked there. And uh, you just wanna make sure these bolts go straight down. You're, again, you're going into aluminum. So very easy to cross thread and, and ruin these threads. So you want to make sure everything's straight when you start and make sure that you don't torque them down to 300 foot pounds. Snug up all four of these bolts. I don't, I don't actually tighten them up until I've got them all kind of pulled down there again for that reason that I want to make sure they're all going in there straight. And if you catch one thread wrong, you're going to destroy the threads on that carburetor. We can take and put our cap on at this point, 17 millimeter uh, wrench to tighten that up. Take and flip that up and I'll show you how to uh, put this cap on. Real quick, air fuel screw is here. And to adjust that or to set that, um, you, you count the amount of turns in, so, or out, I guess. So if you're, if you're gonna take the carburetor apart, you wanna make sure you count how many turns in it is first. So half turn, one, so that was one and a half because I did a half turn earlier. So to take it out now, just unscrew it. You know that it's a turn and a half out is where it needs to be. You take and unscrew it like that. Make sure you got all the pieces here. There's a spring, typically a washer, and typically an O-ring. A lot of times you got to use a pick to get those out. They're kind of stuck down in there. Um, but it goes O-ring, washer, spring, air fuel screw. So again... Make sure it's going in there straight, completely seat it. And again, you don't have to crank on it, just snug it up. When you get to that where it's completely seated, take and back it out. Half turn, one and a half. I will go ahead and put that back, uh, that cable back on there. So let's do this in reverse order. Take this keeper out. I'm gonna take, put this cap on here. Spin it on as far as you need to go there. Take your Spring, slide it on there all the way, make sure it's in the groove there. Slide it down all the way, and then I take and pinch that cable, and slide our cable down into that groove there. It's kinda hard to see from this position. Okay, slide that into position there. Take our keeper, and our you can see that groove there, is going to sit right down beside that throttle cable. So I, we've got our groove right there. And it's going to sit down right. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But it's, going to, it's going to sit down right in that position there. So take that. And you might have to take your screwdriver then. Kind of turn it into place there. Take your slide. The larger, the fatter groove there is going to, slide, is going to go down the idle side. And the longer slot there is going to go down the opposite of the idle side. So I'm going to slide that in. We actually can't let that spring go. And 
when you're sliding it in, you want to make sure that you uh, look down there to make sure that that needle is going directly into that um, lower side of that carburetor. If you don't do that, which it's sticking actually in that position, if you don't do that, you're going to push that uh, needle right up out of that slide. That spring will kind of hold it, but um, it really just needs to go slide all the way down into that bottom side of that carburetor. Take that cap in, spin it on there, and that is a clean carb on a Polaris 250. That's again, that's a two-stroke model, and this is, happens to be a 91 Trail Boss 250. If you've liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, check out my other videos on the Polaris ATV. Actually, hundreds of different videos, service videos on any ATV and motorcycle. So if you found this video helpful, please like and comment below if there's something that you want to see, want me to do a video on, or uh, just appreciate the videos. Thanks for watching.